In the recent 2023 budget proposal, the Japanese Ministry of Defense requested two warships of a brand new huge class. Indeed, if the ships do get built as specified, they will not only be bigger than the US Zumwalt class destroyers, but bigger than any post-World War II destroyer or cruiser in the West. The only bigger warships any NATO-aligned country built would be aircraft carriers. They would be second only to the massive Soviet Kirov-class battlecruisers from the 1980s. There was an earlier Japanese proposal from the late 2020 to build a ship platform which would house Aegis ballistic missile defense systems. That came about after Japan had decided to build two Aegis ashore facilities in 2017, then changed its mind. Such a site already exists in Romania, while a test site is operational in Hawaii. Another site is being built in Poland and will become operational in 2023. Basically, Aegis Ashore acts as a ground-based Aegis BMD system, complete with sensors and missiles to be fired. Their role is one of defense against ballistic missiles, though they could also use anti-aircraft missiles, and in theory even other kind of missiles. But that 2017 decision changed, and even though the Aegis components were purchased from the US, the plan to use the systems on land was dropped. While in late 2020 and up until now, the Aegis BMD ships were envisioned to be some sort of barebone platforms optimized for just that one role, it seems that plan changed as well. Before, there were some rumors that barebone platform would be a multi-hull, perhaps some sort of a catamaran. But with the new single-hull ship proposal in the new budget, it seems Japan's navy is going for a full-fledged warship. And a huge one at that. The proposal outlines a ship of 210 meters in length or less, of 40 meters in width or less, and having a standard displacement of 20,000 metric tons. Now, it's apparent from those dimensions that the ship is far from being defined. Displacement seems more defined, as it's likely it was decided the role of the ship can be performed with a lighter ship, but it's also likely the exact hull hasn't been chosen yet. The huge displacement is there for stability of its radar system. The ships will use a massive variant of Lockheed Martin's SPY-Y radar. While the said family of radars includes small arrays for frigates, it also scales all the way up to the size of LRDR radar. This configuration, tested by Lockheed Martin, might be closer to what the Japanese ships will use. The array is still double the size of the Aegis arrays on the latest US Burke-class destroyers. The Japanese ship is likely to use four such arrays, perhaps similarly to an unsuccessful proposal for very large Aegis-equipped BMD ships for the US Navy. Those proposed taking a San Antonio hull, simplifying it by removing the well deck and all the facilities for housing assault troops and turning it into a huge radar platform. That proposal also had 288 vertical launch cells each capable of housing a large anti-ballistic missile interceptor, like the SM-3, or other missiles, like the SM-6 for long-range air defense, or even Tomahawks for land strikes. It's plausible Japan will go the same route and take an existing hull design, then modify it. Two best hulls for the job Japan has right now are those of the Hyuga and the Izumo class. Both are high-speed hulls, but enlarged to serve as helicopter carriers. The Izumas are so large, actually, that they're being reconfigured to serve as aircraft carriers in the future. For example, if the Izuma is chosen as the basis for the design, its hull might be shortened and made lower. Instead of a flat top deck, it might feature a more regular-looking assault ship superstructure, onto which the massive radar will be placed. The rear half of the ship might follow the US San Antonio ballistic missile defense design and feature just as many vertical launch cells and ample helicopter handling facilities. The plan is for the two ships to patrol in the Sea of Japan, likely close to the Japanese coast for added protection. Having ships house the missile defenses instead of a fixed site on land brings some interesting benefits. Ship's location is not set, it has to be first located and tracked by the enemy. If the threat level is deemed too high, the ships can even go back east of Japan, though that might impact their usefulness against certain types of ballistic missiles going over Sea of Japan. While officially the Aegis Ashore was touted as defense against possible North Korean ballistic missiles, the fact of the matter is such a system can intercept missiles from China as well. The middle and north of Japan in particular would be harder to reach for China if missiles flew over the East China Sea. 
but if the launch points are in northeastern China and missiles fly over the Sea of Japan, Tokyo itself could be more threatened, as well as northern Honshu and the entire Hokkaido. Being mobile, the ships could even go south, protecting the Ryukyu Islands if need be, or even aid in defense of US forces on Guam. Allegedly, alongside the specialized SM-3 anti-ballistic missile interceptors, the newest US-made SM-6 long-range air defense missiles have also been decided as part of the new ship's weapon suite. Those have limited anti-ballistic capabilities, but would primarily serve for protection of the ship itself. They're highly advanced and offer ample range. Given the size of the ship, it's plausible its missile count may be close to the already mentioned proposal for a similar US ship. If indeed Japan's new big destroyer holds close to 288 missiles, then we might even be talking about an arsenal ship. Not just task for ballistic missile defense, but also serving as a general role missile dispenser. Already there's been talk that the ships might come equipped with the Japanese newest strike missile, the second generation Type 12 variant. In its new modification, the missile features stealth shaping and a greatly increased range. With its dual anti-ship and ground strike role, it may be a big part of ship's armament. But for now, the ship is not yet funded. The budget first needs to be approved. If everything goes through, Japan might boast one of the biggest warships around come 2027 or so, when the first ship is planned to be built.